Uh, thank you very much, delegates. And again, I'd like to welcome you, a very warm welcome. Uh, and uh, acknowledging that great welcome to country we had this morning, I uh, once again would like to pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land on which we meet. My fellow elected officers of the ACTU, especially Jeff Lawrence, who is attending his final Congress as Secretary, to the ACTU executive, delegates, our international guests, comrades and friends. Over the next three days, the eyes of Australia will be upon us. Australian unions. We are the largest social movement in our country. There are close to 1,000 of us here today, and we've come together to celebrate our wins, to demonstrate our unity, to show our commitment to our members, and make serious decisions about how we will respond to the challenges we face as a movement and as a nation. To those of you who are attending Congress for the first time, a very special welcome. Soak up every moment and take pride in being part of a movement of two million working people. A movement that has existed for well over a century and endures despite whatever challenges are thrown at it. For the history of Australia from white settlement is in many ways a history of the union movement. But Australia, of course, has a black history and as a movement, we are proud to stand with our Aboriginal brothers and sisters for issues like land rights, Aboriginal workers' rights and economic opportunity. Workers acting collectively have a proud history in this country and the union movement has been the clearest and strongest expression of values of Australians. We have fought for fairness at work and equal opportunity for the wealth of the nation to be shared for the benefit of all. We fought for a society that gives the brightest and best a fair chance to realise their talents and for the less fortunate to be treated with compassion and dignity. This is what we stood for then and it is what we stand for now. We have recognised that no man or woman is an island that we can achieve collectively what we could never achieve on our own and that solidarity is a virtue. These values transcend the issues of the day. They are universal, they are timeless. From the eight hour day battles through the establishment of fair wages, of aged and disability pensions, through to the modern achievements of superannuation and paid parental leave, Unions have been at the forefront of building this country. This is what we stand for. None of these battles was won easily. And the history of the union movement is also a history of the attacks on it, of attempts to break our spirit, to reduce our power. We've often faced an unequal struggle against vested interests with very deep pockets and political influence. We fought off attacks from Tory governments, from billionaires, from business groups, and the slurs and misrepresentation of the right-wing media. And comrades, we have come back stronger every single time. Unions connect us all. All of us are here today because we made a decision to join a union. We did so in different circumstances, at different times, and in different workplaces. But we did so because we recognised that workers not only need a voice to defend their interests, but that society needs the voice of workers to be heard. We understood we have an obligation to help those in need. We also understood that change does not just happen. It has to be fought for. For me, as a young nurse in my early 20s, the decision to join the union was a no-brainer. The values of Australian unions had been well and truly established around our dinner table in the Kearney household. And on joining the union, it didn't take long for me to become active. It was actually during a heated dispute about shift lengths at the hospital I worked at that I became a job rep and helped organise a successful outcome. 
And I learned from the legendary 50-day Victorian nurses' strike in 1986, the power of the collective to make change. Man, I was totally hooked. You know, I'm sure that in this room there are 1,000 stories just like that. This is a critical time for Australian unions. Mirroring international trends, membership has been on a slow decline for several decades. Although I know the innovative work of many people in this room has seen it increase in recent years. And while traditional industrial unions are vitally important to the movement, union membership has shifted towards more female-dominated public and community sector workers. Despite recent increases, we face the problem of being a collective movement in an individualistic age. The magnificent campaign for equal pay for community sector workers run by the ASU and other unions will benefit hundreds of thousands of workers, union members or not. It will also benefit thousands of vulnerable Australians who depend on the community sector. And more broadly, the values of fair pay, of the right of workers to bargain, and the belief that workers have a right to be treated with dignity in the workplace are still embedded in the Australian political DNA. I tell you this because we hear that people are no longer joiners and that every other organisation is facing the same challenges we are facing. But the mistake that our opponents make is assuming that in some way raw numbers are a reflection that our values and beliefs are no longer supported by Australian people. But this ignores the fact that our, our work helps all workers. Our campaigns on the minimum wage, for example, directly benefit 1.4 million people, while there are more than 4 million workers on collective agreements. The success of the Your Rights at Work campaign should remind all politicians and the broader Australian community, not just union members, we will stir and respond to unfair attacks on working conditions. Concepts like unfair dismissal laws, penalty rates and paid leave are absolutely still supported in our community and this is despite the best efforts of employer groups. The Australian people recognise what we recognise. That workers should not be treated as cogs in a machine, that they are people with needs and responsibilities beyond work. They understand that work is a third of our lives and that the values of fairness and decency should not be left at the door when we walk into our workplaces. They recognise that the relationship between bosses and workers is an inherently unequal one, and that without the support of fair laws and strong unions, workers are at risk of exploitation. This is what we stand for. Like all of us, I have been deeply disturbed by the allegations emanating from the HSU East branch. Now I know I speak for everyone in this room when I say that misuse of members' money and contempt for the accountability to members are unacceptable. Whether it's a union, a company, or an agency of government, misappropriation of funds, corruption, or poor governance can't be tolerated. We all bear responsibility for ensuring our movement has integrity, is governed properly, and is transparent and accountable to its members. And we know we will always be held to a higher moral standard because of the workers who put their trust in us. I want to make sure that trust is never broken. Delegates, it was a very difficult decision to suspend the HSU from the ACTU because we know the majority of officials, delegates and members of that union are decent, 
committed people of integrity. But it was the right thing to do. We must ensure the highest standards of governance and accountability are upheld throughout our movement and that zero tolerance is enforced. The workplace has changed hugely in recent decades. The forces of economic liberalisation have shattered many of the old certainties about a job for life or the nine to five working day. The new international economy has delivered new opportunities for some, but massive downsides for others. The Working Australia Census told us that modern work is less physically demanding, but there are new stresses and new pressures. The trend in recent years for, is for an increase in overtime, often unpaid, and for work to bleed into family life. We see women juggling multiple jobs and caring responsibilities, while at the same time, a group of older men struggles to find work at all. If there's one issue for the new economy that cuts across so many industries and affects so many of our affiliates, it's insecure work. Many workers float between unemployment, underemployment and brief periods of work with no certainty, no career structure and no ability to plan for the future. The modern business model is built on shifting risk onto the shoulders of some of our most vulnerable workers and their families. Such as the cleaners who find out an hour before their shift if they're needed that day the TAFE teachers on February to November contracts, and the labourers forced to work as contractors so that their employers can avoid paying superannuation or workers' compensation. These workers who keep our society going deserve some certainty in their lives. Insecure work is part of the broader issue of inequality in our society and the challenge of how we retain our egalitarian nature while remaining competitive. The theme of this Congress, Secure Jobs, Better Future, represents our enduring values. Workers deserve secure jobs and unions will always fight for them. And we'll continue to cast forward for a better future at work, at home and in our communities. We live in an age where economic rationalism often appears to have won the day. The orthodoxy that measures the success of our economy is by the size of company profits. We have allowed global mining companies to convince us that their operations are more important to the national interest and to write our tax laws for us. Tax reform is seen solely in terms of cutting the top rates of income tax or company tax, not in making the system fairer or easier for low income earners. Low productivity is seen as the fault of the workers and unions. It's never the fault of management or through lack of investment. In this view of the world, reduced pay and conditions and attacks on the power to bargain collectively are seen as the only way we can compete internationally. Social equality and solidarity have been replaced as cardinal virtues by aspiration and material wealth. Deregulation and the privatisation of government services are seen as the only way forward and the public service is not seen as an asset, just as an expense to be cut. Overseas, the shock of the global financial crisis and the rise of the Occupy movement in the USA has seen a questioning of these orthodoxies. Recent results in the French presidential election, the Greek parliamentary elections and the local elections in the UK and Italy show that the people of Europe are beginning to question what they are being told by their political leaders. But despite this, Australian political debate is still dominated by these conservative orthodoxies. To the point, delegates, we're failing to cut company tax and giving money to families to help pay school costs is being slammed as class warfare. The voice of workers is rarely heard in this debate. And that's why we must advocate for an economic alternative and to push a broader social agenda based on equal opportunity for all. We need to fight for an alternative vision of how our society and our economy can function. One 
where opportunity and reward for effort can be balanced with a strong safety net and a genuine compassion for our vulnerable. Where our economic growth can come from genuine improvements to productivity, not simply cutting wages or forcing workers to work longer hours. Because this is what we stand for. The role of unions in pushing this economic vision will become even more important if the global economic situation worsens. Now all of us are here because we believe in the power of acting together. We've seen the benefits of being organised and of campaigning for what we believe. The network we have that stretches into so many workplaces and unites so many people is absolutely unique and totally irreplaceable. There are some fights that can't be won, believe it or not, by just clicking like on Facebook or watching a YouTube video. They must be won by working together. The union movement remains the best vehicle for this. And we will continue to modernise. Yesterday, we held our first ever Youth Congress, which was attended by well over 100 delegates. We have a renewed commitment to our younger workers and the future of the economy and our movement. But in modernising, we must never forget our successes and what has made us strong. There are many people who don't see their values reflected in the rhetoric that they hear from business who do not accept that our future is longer hours, less security, lower pay and less equality. And if we do not speak for them, who will? We are strongest when we are fighting for something we believe in, whether it's fair pay for community workers, the battle to keep good, secure jobs in Australia or for justice for the victims of asbestos. When we stand together as a movement, we shine. We also, as a movement, have a rich nation, and in a rich nation, have a very proud history of international solidarity, fighting for a fairer, more peaceful world. We can't lose sight of that very important obligation. You know, our enemies operate globally very well, not just domestically and so must we. The labour movement has uplifted Australia. It has provided a standard of living and a fairly shared wealth that is the envy of the world. It has tempered the harshness of life by fighting for social welfare and public services to mitigate against bad luck. It has amplified the quiet voices of everyday people and it has allowed them to be heard by those in power. All of you in this room are inheritors of that proud tradition. We also inherit the knowledge that if we don't do it, then it simply will not get done. We know that if there is to be any move towards a progressive Australia, towards a society based on equality, then it must come from us. So much can start from the drive and passion of every single one of you in this room. We have the chance now to build on the mighty foundations that have been laid by the shearers, by the engine drivers, by the nurses, and the factory workers of this country and ensure that the voices of workers will continue to be heard. Because delegates, this is what we stand for. Thank you.